everyone. Welcome to Beyond Clinical Walls. This is Dr. BCW, and I am so excited to introduce my next guest, Laura St. John. Now, when I share all of the amazing things about who she is and what she embodies, you will just be in awe as well as you will be inspired. So Laura St. John is a celebrity mindset coach. She has helped CEOs, celebrities, athletes to be able to see what they have in themselves and to be able to manifest and bring it forward so they can achieve those performance goals. Whatever is at top of mind to that individual, that is what Laura St. John really captures and helps you create. She has been recognized by major media outlets, including Netflix, Selling Sunset, and NBC Access Hollywood, where she showcased her exceptional mindset coaching. She was also recently handpicked by a mindset coach, Gradient, for her expertise. She has also been known to help Fortune 500 companies, and as I mentioned before, really provide insight, expertise, and this ongoing relationship to continue to achieve your goals with top CEOs, executives, those in the entertainment industry, and more. She has also become a friend, and I am so excited for everyone to hear her thoughts, her inspiration. And one thing that Everybody knows when you when you talk about Dr. BCW and, and my work and my passion, it's about, yes, raising awareness, but it's also about what can you do when you're facing challenges, whether it's health or, or different issues. And Laura embodies that and really provides the opportunity to do something and really see that power within yourself. So Laura, thank you so much for joining Beyond Clinical Walls. Please introduce yourself to the listeners. Hi, Dr. BCW and audience. It's such a pleasure and honor to be here. I'm so excited. I believe time is one of our greatest commodities, so I'd love to make it a very special experience today. I'm Laura St. John. Thanks for the beautiful intro. I love helping people get unstuck and see past challenges and create new results very powerfully and very quickly. Tell me why you do what you do, because when listeners can hear that story, that journey, that drive, it really helps paint a picture of to why you do what you do. And I think even more so, it really reflects your work and, and what you've been able to achieve. I love this question. It hits right to the heart. I really feel like sometimes people want to access their dreams, but they're feeling the opposite. They're very frustrated. They feel weak and powerless. They feel very stuck. And oftentimes you think there's a lot of these mindset programs or different things that are just for, to create the dreams. And it's really, you know, something that I've felt my entire life. What do you do though, when you're stuck behind the challenge? What do you do when all you see in your face is the negative? And I knew that I could always help see, like, see people through to the other side. I've been experiencing this my whole life to my earliest memories. My mom was given two years to live when I was six years old, and she's alive today. And you know, just having experience was where you know, you're put behind an extreme wall, it feels like, and you feel like things are crumbling, yet to hold a belief inside your heart that that might not be in alignment. So, you know, I've been doing it my whole life when I really reflect back the ability to see this potential intuitively, but I've made it a step-by-step -step process. But my earliest years, I would say my why was driven a lot by my mom's experience and seeing her get to the other side and enjoy her grandkids today and knowing that, wow, a lot of people experience these challenges, maybe not like that, but in their own ways, in their own paths. And I just kept designing ways that you can get unstuck and unlock that next step. And when we talk about getting unstuck, that can mean so many different things for different people. And one thing that I really love that you do, you help people identify what is the root? What is the, the issue that's really causing you to be stuck? Is it a perspective? Is it really a, a true barrier or challenge, whether physical, mental, all of those areas, because you need to uncouple that in order to address it. And, you know, when you talk about 
about your journey, your story with your mom, and even what you manifest to decide what you want it to do, I would love for the listeners, you know, to hear that story. When I think about where you came from, when you had mentioned being in like a one bedroom apartment and, and all of those things, I would love to hear that story because, you know, sometimes we hear people talk about things, but have they really been able to achieve it? And you have been able to do that and continue to continue that work. Yeah, it's amazing because I think that you have to be a testament to what you teach. I think I'm a student and a teacher of my own work through and through. And although I, you know, think back to my earliest childhood experiences, there's always a lot of contributing factors that lead you to where you are today. So one of the contributing factors is, you know, when was I personally feeling stuck in my own life situations or where were other family members stuck? So I've always been able to see like, yes, living in a Denver apartment, knowing in my life, like I wanted to live at the beach, you know, how, how am I going to take my three kids who were stuffed in one bedroom and eventually live this magnificent life in Malibu, California, where I am now. And you start to understand that again, what might be your physical surrounding doesn't have to be your future. And, you know, sometimes how do you create that step by step? So you see that this might not be in line with who you want to become. A lot of times people get stuck in, you know, just looking at their current reality. And I would always just look outside my apartment and be like, let me pop that pine tree into a palm tree. I really believe, you know, we're going to live this fantastic, like life on vacay, I called it, where you don't have to basically leave your life to go on vacation, that I want to wake up that relaxed, calm, neutral, like happy Laura. And it just comes from years. You know, I remember after I had my third son feeling really unhappy in my own skin and different things and being like, what even makes me happy? And I went on a complete quest of happiness. And, you know, some of these deep, dives into my own personal journey has become some of my greatest tools. My happy list and teaching people how to unblock their happiness is now one of the biggest things that I've taught thousands and thousands of people when I when they reflect years later on some of the most signature parts of my content. But you know, my niece years ago, how I became a mindset coach is my niece Libby Dunn, who's now the number one NCAA female paid athlete at the time of this recording, she's just a superstar. We, she was stuck in her gymnastics and I knew some of the personal experiences, like I just shared with you that I was going through myself and kind of uncovering and creating my own tools for me to uncover to the next level. I could see how she was getting stuck in her gymnastics and her mom, who's my sister, Kat was like, you know, start talking to aunt Laura. She's into all this mindset manifesting stuff. And I had just been developing a lot of these pieces for myself. So I started coaching her every night, Sunday through Thursday on her gymnastics. And we created what we called a bigger than Olympic dream because she was on her way to 2020 Olympics at that time as one of the youngest junior elite gymnasts. And USA Gymnastics went through a whole bunch of turmoil, but just to cut right through it, the vision that I crafted with Livy, the bigger than Olympic dream, my statement to her was, what if the Olympics are limiting you? What if you're actually meant to create the identity of you that's beyond this goal? And I really rolled up my sleeves and I started creating a basically a six step blueprint on how to achieve your dreams that are bigger than what you even anticipate and how to create the version of you that's past what you thought your even goal was like the end goal. So for her, she wanted to be famous. She wanted to be a superstar. You know, she was 12 and 13 at this time. Instagram was coming out. She was like, I want to be verified. I want to be a social media star. I want to create, you know, clothes because I love clothes and fashion. She was designing her own leotards. And it's really just amazing because NCAA athletes back then could not make any money. And had I told her it was the Olympics that would get her to that, let's just work on the Olympics, that would have been actually shortchanging or limiting her path because we couldn't make up back then that there was additional pathways to this dream, that the NIL rules would change, the NCAA rules would change. So this six-step blueprint that I crafted on how to get unstuck how to see past your main goal and design this version of you that you haven't never been yet. You know, how do you step into that version of you today, even as a teenage girl and start embodying that so you can really step into this 
version of self-worth and self-confidence and self-esteem, which were the, all the main drivers. And I was Aunt Laura, the mindset coach, and I became Aunt Laura, the mindset coach. I had no intention of becoming a mindset coach. Suddenly all these parents were calling me saying like, can you coach my daughter? Can you coach my child? And I just kept working through this blueprint until fast forward, Gradient, the team at Google that I worked with, like a huge company started finding me and getting, having me be their happiness coach. Teams started finding me, celebrities started finding me. I've never advertised it. And it's all just been word of mouth. And it's, you know, really cool to see people's journeys and whether it's a homeless person I'm helping manifest the money to get shelter or a huge company that's trying to take it to the next level. It's the same blueprint, which is part of the excitement for me. Really cracked it. And, you know, one piece when I think about you really encourage that person to have that forecast and not allow any sort of barriers or things to think that you can't. Why not? Even if you're 13, 14, as your niece was, we're thinking bigger when you're 20, 30 versus feeling like you have to kind of just be in that center zone of what's now because if you're just in that, how are you supposed to be able to even think about achieving it if you haven't even started that process? And that's what you do on so many different layers, which is quite powerful when I think of whether it's mental health, physical health, all of those areas that are so important. It's not a one stop. It's all of these things to think about what would you like to achieve first and then think about what things are stopping you and have you gone as big as you can in that mind said as you're creating that blueprint. And I think that piece is just so important. When you talk about the happiness that you brought forward with Google and your niece as well, I, I would be remiss if I didn't allow, you know, the opportunity to shine a light on what you did on the show as well, because I think that really shows the versatility that you have with working, whether it's athletes, whether it's someone who is in a financial crises or different challenges. I'd love for you to sh talk about that. Great. I love it. I think no matter where you're feeling stuck and no matter what age you're at, I have like 80 year olds now in my program. It's so exciting to see it, you know, men, women, people from literally all over the world. So with my happiness content, something I've really uncovered is that where does happiness come from and how do we access it? How does it not feel so fleeting how can we, no matter what age we're at, no matter what we've been through, no matter what our current roadblocks are, feel that sense of just joy. And what I really learned and how I teach happiness is that it's in our hearts at all time. It just might be blocked. So it's not something we have to get outside of us. Sure, we could look at something outside of us, like I mentioned earlier, popping a pine tree to a palm tree in my imagination and then smiling at the thought of a palm tree. But instead of saying the palm tree makes me happy and giving the external power away to even a positive emotion, which we typically do with the negative emotion, like you're making me feel negative. I, I learned to teach people to harness their emotional state because that's what drives your day, right? How do you harness the power of your happiness? How do you harness the power of maintaining your emotional state, mostly positive? So your dominant thoughts, your dominant emotional state throughout the day, your, then your course of actions towards a positive will propel it at an exponential level. So I had to boil it, boil it, boil it down over the years until it was so simple, so digestible, so approachable, which I feel like you and I connect at such a deep level. <laughs> like how do you take something that feels so complicated or even stuck or impossible and make it so simple that was my work with, with working with kids, you know, and I actually grew an education technology company to many locations working with three to eight year olds even for years. So I always saw like, where is it in a three to eight year old and where does it go? You know, how do we, how do we lose it? So one of the big discoveries I found is that it doesn't go anywhere. It just gets blocked. And if you can really look at your happiness as 100% in your heart in unlimited quantities, just like love gets covered up. Trust gets covered up. There's an amazing amount of happiness that maybe you're not feeling right now, but to see it as if it's being blocked, but that it's there. And if you could feel like it's there, just like your heart is there, it's inside your body right now. Your, your happiness is there. It's inside you right now. But know that whether it's an internal thing, your own self-doubts, your own maybe self-rejection, your guilt, your shame, your 
feeling of lack or not good enough, whether it's an internal emotion that's blocking it or what we, you said earlier, like an external thing, like it's the money, it's the boss, it's my roommate, it's my coworker, it's my spouse that's, that feels like it's blocking it. Those are also negative feelings that are just blocking it. And when I teach people, not just to think about what do you want to manifest, what are some new results you'd like to create, but when I teach people the most important part of my curriculum, which is, well, what's blocking it? Is it internal? Is it external? Like that's just blocking your unbelievable amount of trust that's inside you. That's blocking your unbelievable amount of happiness that's inside you. Let me teach you now how to get unblocked. And I give people very simple tools then to unblock themselves so they don't have to lean into me as a coach to do it for them. I think it's more empowering. And I've seen this over the years working with young, young kids to always give people the tools to do it themselves. And I think that's so empowering because if you're feeling powerless, what you really want to feel is power, you know, in yourself. When you're feeling doubt, what you really want to feel is trust in yourself. What you, when you're feeling unhappy, you want to feel happy. And so I do my signature flip it. I have like all these little tools of how to flip the negative to the positive and reaccess that happy state that goes into this calm, neutral flow and then get into these higher level emotions of confidence and trust and love and all the other higher levels. The fact that you're starting from one area, which opens up different areas that need to be tapped into. So you can build that roadmap. You can create that blueprint. And to your point, external and internal, because we often think about the things that are around us, but we also forget about the things internally, our Mm -hmm. own mind. A mind is a powerful thing. And so, you know, that could just be even your, the first step that doesn't even allow you to even deal with what you think is the the actual problem, which may not be the problem. And the other piece that I love is giving the individual the opportunity to harness their own tools that you provide so they can use it as they go on. And sometimes you hear about these one-stop shops and this part, I I think this part is important that I'm going to mention. Sometimes you go away, you hear these amazing talks or you feel super inspired by something you listen to. And then there's this feeling of, well, what do I do with it? First of all, it's hard sometimes what to do with it because if we haven't done the work within our internal or external or both, we can't harness that information. And so by you creating this toolkit, by identifying all those areas, then allowing someone to have that gift of an internal, external tool set to be able to move forward because we're always evolving. And as we evolve, we're creating that forecast to have something go along with you is just fantastic. I I love that piece. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was, can you share with the listeners one challenge or difficult thing that you've encountered that you have really, I know we, we talked about the, the history from before, but just recently, anything that comes to mind that you were really able to in that moment kind of bring forward your toolkit within yourself? Yeah, I can. It's interesting because it, it just popped up as a medical thing, as a mom of three kids and learning to speak my truth, right? With great, great courage when faced upon something negative. One of my sons was, you know, I have three boys. so they're, we, We've been through hospital visits of different bones and they're very active. But I had this one situation and, you know, where my son needed emergency surgery. And it's just in that heat of the moment when you're pressed with what do you do in in making a decision or saying the words that you need to say and not allowing the circumstances to like quiet your voice when your heart feels like it needs to speak up. I was just in a situation where my son, my youngest needed some emergency surgery and I'll never forget the doctor came around the corner. We're in the hallway waiting to be seen and he came over to me, like shaking his head, start starting to say, I have some bad news. And my son was literally sitting there, you know, wide eyed. Cause you know, he's nervous already. He was in extreme pain. And I immediately did my nip zip tool, which is to nip the negative momentum as it's coming at you and like to, to stop its momentum in its track. So you can shift the energy of it immediately and then 
not be engaged in the fear of it. Because very much as a parent, I could be like, oh my goodness, tell me what's going on and imagine the worst case scenario, which is where our brains typically want to take us. So I made all these like logical tools and I had to you know, really double down on my own tools in the heat of the moment being like, nip it, zip it. Okay. I'm going to nip the energy of this momentum coming at me. I'm going to zip it. And I quickly redirected him by taking out my phone and being like, hold on before you go any further. Like I need to make a call to, you know, I just literally made up, like, I got to call my uncle because I want him to overhear this conversation. I, I, whatever just poured out was just the reminder to me to nip and zip the negative as it comes at you. And it's one of the first lessons I teach in my blueprint. How do you stop the negative momentum when it's coming at you? Sometimes it's bubbling up inside you. That's another tool. But in this case, it's coming at you. And I, I quickly employed that. And then you can shift your energy and say the words you need to say, because you're flipping your focus then from like, oh my goodness, what's wrong to like, hey, I'm, I'm the guardian of my vision of my, my health, my kids' health. I need to protect the integrity of like where I want this vision to go, which is his health, his mm -hmm. safety, his security, um, his mom. Like I'm going to speak from that courageous moment. And I nipped that. And then the surgeon comes out in very similar situation. Like she starts talking about how there was a shortage of people and staff. So it's not usually her as the surgeon rolling us up the, in the elevator and all that. And she is starting to tell me that the odds are like one to 2%, like kind of skewing in the major negative of what she anticipated. And same thing. I was like, I got to speak my truth with courage. I just could feel my tools, I, I, after you nip it and zip it, I teach people how to flip it. How do you engage in the outcome that you actually desire? Not avoid what you don't want, which is where most people get stuck, scared of avoiding what they don't want and then taking action. So I did my flip it method where on that elevator ride up, I'm like, Laura St. John, flip it. Cl what do I clearly desire? Not what do I not want, right? The can, not the can't. And I felt the flip that I call it flip it on the fly. When you learn my flip it method, it's life changing. It, it's what was you know featured on the Netflix show where how do you stop engaging and giving your keys of your emotional power again away to what's in front of you. And I spoke to the surgeon again with such a calm, matter of fact energy of we will be the one to 2% chance that comes out positive, not the 90, you know, eight to 99 that doesn't in this circumstance. And then I did all my visualization techniques of, you know, granted, then he got rolled away. And of course, my mama eyes are like tearing. And I was just like, well, our arms are, you know, being separated and he's getting rolled away. You know, I allow myself to feel the emotions. I just know I'm feeling fear right now. So when you're feeling fear, what happens? All the visuals start popping in your head of all the negative things that could go wrong because you're feeling fear. And, you know, I teach another method called my two second movie method where it's like one, two, what's the snapshot of the outcome that you do want? And instead of playing the low light reel, which is like worst case scenario of this thing that's happening right now in your current reality, how do you train your brain to play a, just a one, two snippet of the outcome you desire? So although tears were rolling down my eyes and I felt my courage and I felt my fear, I then went to the parent waiting room with my husband holding hands and I just kept imagining a little two second movie of the surgeon coming out saying, you're not going to believe this. It all came out just great. And then I also played a two second movie of my son's decorating the Christmas tree. And it happened in this surgery was happening Thanksgiving weekend. And I just kept picturing, we had just gotten our tree the day before. And I just <laughs> kept picturing all three of them, you know, just graciously like hanging the ornaments on the tree and feeling such joy in my heart that I could redirect my imagination to the outcome that was even not happening in this moment. That was not even just the surgeon coming out, but maybe a, a month from now looking back. And that's one of my specialties because I saw my mom go through that when she had cancer, holding a space for our family of a positive outcome, how positive that felt to my heart. And it's what I teach people, like whether it's a financial crisis you're going through, a job crisis or a relationship crisis, like how do you start training your brain? Even when I'm coaching an elite athlete or Olympian or even a team like Google, how do you start training your brain that's already imagining, right? It's already going somewhere. How do you retrain it? to the positive. So you feel better because if you feel better, you're more likely going to create at least your participation in that end result as much as humanly possible.
You're going to hold the different energy through every little action you take. So this, this good news is the surgeon did come out. We had like, you know, a fantastic end result. My son's fine, but you feel your power go from powerless to powerful and what you can do that's inside your control, which is you are, you know, these are, these are free things that you get to do. You are in control of your thoughts. You are in control of your emotional state. You are in control of how you take action, whether you're doing it from the negative or avoidance, or you're doing it from the positive. And I really, really tripled down on my entire tool set in that one example. And that's what just came to mind. So I appreciate your question. Yes. And I think just for people to hear that in the moment, and not only with it being a personal thing, but then also pulling forward your work, what you are driven to do and helping people in these different ways, it all came forward in this one minute kind of in the moment space where you had your most precious person at the forefront. In those moments, that's when you can tell when certain things do live and breathe and are able to ultimately deliver that outcome or deliver that ability to see through all of those other issues. I think every person, mom, wife, anybody listening will relate to your story, Laura, and it will help them think about what they can do moving forward. Speaking of that, I would love for everyone just to hear how can they connect with you and and get to know more about all of the offerings that you have shared here and how can they get in touch with you? Thank you. I would love to connect with anyone that like my story and content is resonating with because I fully believe that there's such unity and strength in coming together. So no matter what you're going through right now, I don't believe in coincidences. I fully believe that there's not any mistake or coincidences. And if you're meant to hear this, my message is meant to be heard by you. I have a lot of content across my social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok. I love making little short form video clips for people to just like do my quick flips and how to shift their thoughts and their emotions to the outcome they want. I have a seven day free manifesting challenge. That's my part of my mother of all giveaways. I'm a mom and I always want to be that teacher that you always wish your kid had. Like, that's what I always want to be to the planet. I'm always like, you know, you know, that person that believes in you sometimes before you do. And that is in your corner. I've always imagined that I could help people by being that for them, because sometimes the people closest to you are the ones that might be your biggest naysayers. And it might be the version of you in the mirror to yourself right now. That's really hard on yourself. So I love being that person for people until my voice is their voice in their head, believing in themselves. So that I do a lot of free content and I made that part of my mother of all giveaways for mother's day. Last year, I do a big scholarship program every mother's day. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take this intro to manifesting course that I built right after I was on Netflix. It was right before Google had found me. I was in a spiral up in my own career. And I was like, what would be my thing that I want to capture right now in my energy that I was in? And I, I filmed that amazing intro course. So that's accessible now to everybody. They could take it and retake it over and over again because they'll learn a lot of the intro tools to some of these pieces of my blueprint that I think can really help people get unstuck. If I then resonate with you as your coach, I invite you to continue on and do a six-week private group coaching experience. It takes my private one-on-one coaching, that six-week blueprint, and it of my toolkits, and it brings it into a very deeper dive where you get to work with me twice a week on Zooms and a collective group of amazing people around the planet. I call them my dream team. And we work together every week. We do a lesson on Monday. That's the lesson of the week that they get to just practice on. And we have live Q&As so people can come to me on Zoom or post a question about like, hey, Laura, but this is exactly where I'm stuck. Like, what do you suggest? And I can offer people guidance. So when people are ready to really either skip over the seven day and jump right into the group coaching, to me, that's one of my favorite things I do every single week is engage in that six week experience with new people that are coming in. And then from there, people are eligible to join in on my mindset school, which is my monthly program. But it's a very simple way in. It's like, start with the free, jump into the six week, you know, just see your world change. There's different ones on love relationships and health and happiness. There's ones on career and abundance and purpose or just building your dream life. 
So you're really going to find the content that's right for you. But I can't wait to meet people. And I, I and I hope people please check her out on Instagram, TikTok. She puts great videos out there, little snippets that you, I like to say you can just take it into your heart, your pocket, your mind <laughs> in those moments. And they're just fantastic. So please check those out. And I also want to highlight everybody learns or really takes in information differently. And I love the fact that someone can actually even go on site and be able to take in the experience. That's true. So I do in-person retreats. I Everything's accessible on my main website, which is Strong Confident Living. So my company is Strong Confident Living. Strengthen yourself and build your confidence and make it a lifestyle, make it who you are. But I, yeah, between the content, the digital content, the online courses and private group coaching that is all online, I do offer one or two day experiences around the planet. I'm actually traveling to Europe soon to do one there, but usually in, you know, at my place here in Malibu or in California, but I've popped up in different places in the in all over the world. So keep in touch too, if you're interested to meet me in person. Excellent. Well, it was a true pleasure just to have you join Beyond Clinical Walls. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for the heartfelt ideas, inspiration, all of those things. It was very inspiring and also very solution-oriented where you could take those nuggets that you dropped throughout this interview and really be able to apply it to your life right in that moment. So thank you for joining me. I always end the show with a level of gratitude. So Thank you to everyone who took the time to listen. This is Dr. BCW with Beyond Clinical Walls. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. And if you found this information helpful, please hit the thumbs up. It really helps the channel. As always, thanks for watching and thank you for your support.